So, Steve, um, tell us a little about yourself. Uh, Who Steve, are you? Steve Lama. <laughs> um, been in real estate for uh, going on seven years. Yeah. I started with Remax first. Sorry about that. That's um, cool. And then I came to KW about six months into being licensed, uh, joined a, a team within Keller Williams. At that time, we were doing about 126 units. Mm -hmm. um, and there were three of us total, along with the Rainmaker. And then we scaled that to um, about 425 units. Yeah. Uh, we went through several reincarnations, and I learned a lot. We learned a lot. Um, and we weren't profitable in 2017. So we did about four and a half million GCI and lost money. So we reorganized. Stop just for a second. That's not good. No. Okay. I just want to make sure. <clears throat> so we reorganized. Uh, and then in 2018, uh, I came into work one day. Yep. And um, my, uh, par I consider my, my partner at that point um, decided to move brokerages. Um, and then the rest of the last year has just been kind of a whirlwind. Yeah, so you walked in one day and the, the, the owner of that business said, I'm leaving. He texted me like four times that morning, which was totally out of character. So he had already made the decision. Um, and then I spent about a week exploring uh, both that model, right. and I knew our model, right? I knew the character and conviction of, uh, and all of you guys, because it's just, I mean, the, the culture at KW is something that keeps you here, yeah. and I don't think, um, I think he was, uh, poor business decisions led to that decision, right? right. right. And um, I wasn't gonna allow him to dictate for me where I wanted to go. Right. Yeah. So you were presented with, it's kind of like you go home at night, you say, honey, I have good news and bad news. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The bad news is the whole thing has gone to heck right. and I'm alone. The good news is I have an opportunity to see if I can now be my own businessman. Yes. And I knew that wasn't going to be a problem, right? So. Um, Did you? How's that? Well, I produce. 200 listings. I mean, even though the lead generation was taken care of, I knew I could sign listings um, easily, right? Yes. I know lead generation, and, and I love um, that you that you broke it down into earlier this morning. Um, just set seven appointments a week. Mm. I mean, it's that simple to have a million dollar business, and that's why there's so much tech money flowing into the business, right? It's right. that simple. Um, so now, you, now let's let's talk about that. So this is so. In this calendar year, you're, yes. on, you're on track. What do you think could happen? We're going to do a million GCI. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we're at 53 units. So uh, your first full year alone? Yes. Yep, there you go. Right. 126 listing appointments. Um, we have 24 on our contract right now, which is brutal. My yeah. phone is blowing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it is brutal. <laughs> So what are the challenges? So first off, how do you do it? And then number two, what are the challenges? Challenges, and, and um, it's been really hard on my, my family, number one. Um, yeah. at, so it was July when I got the news, and then uh, my daughter was due to be born in August. So I called them and was like, dude, what are you doing? You know, I'm, I'm expecting to have a little girl. So that's been really hard, missing her um, three to four days a week. But I think it goes back to, I went to a mastermind yesterday. Is she here? She's here because you want, of you. you. You want to bring her out? I don't know where she's at right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> they, they brought her back out here. Um, I was at a mastermind yesterday with Tim and Adam Hergenrothen, which I yeah. really respect those two. Yep. And both of them said two to three years of just chaos and hard work. And I told my wife when I first got married to her, hey, for five years, I'm 100% committed to this business which means I'm gonna be gone late, gone weekends. That reset like on the five year mark. So we basically sat back down oh, no. and said, we have another five years to go probably. Oh no, Yeah. no way. <clears throat> it's been brutal. Yeah. And then not, not only that, but. Um, you need to stop that. I know. 
Okay. But the skill sets of a listing agent are different than a business owner. So yep. remember that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So now yeah. I'm trying to master recruiting, hiring, um, and, 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 and that's kind of brutal. Yeah, we're, we're on our fourth admin at this point yeah, over the last sucks. year. Yeah. Um, and so trying to take your calendar, and they talk a lot about this, um, and split up your time between production and recruiting is very difficult. That messy very middle difficult. portion that you went through. That well, you thought you had the perfect person. I you, did. You called me and said, this is the one. I, I, if I can get this woman, she's going to be amazing. She is. Yeah, and what happened? She got recruited away. By who? <laughs> um, well, her ex-employer, my, my ex-employer, I guess, he doubled her salary. Um, but that's okay, it was a great opportunity for her, right? And, and that was good. The moral of the story is keep your head down and keep working, right? So uh, yep. I, I think you say success through failure. You oh, learn yeah. the most when oh, you yeah. fail. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and honestly, I'm starting to get really good at failure, and, it, and it's awesome, right? Yeah. Well, the, here's the reality is, and, 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 and I, I love the way you think. The truth is, is that um, hire, hiring people, finding people, hiring people, engaging people at a high level in order to, to build a business together is its own discipline. Definitely. It's completely di a different discipline than taking a listing. It's a Definitely. different thing. That's right. And, it, and it, there's a journey for that. And that's the pain point. And you don't have the time. So when you're looking for someone, either A, you take less li listing appointments, or it's like having more listing appointments added on. Yes, yeah, to right. all of it. Yeah, right. um, <clears throat> and, and, you know, I have a big goal to do a million GCI f from scratch, right? And I'm unwilling to bend on that goal. So I just make my calendar work. Right, and, and that's hard for your family, um, but I'm unwilling to, to sacrifice that goal. Yeah, so there's, only, there, there, there's a secret to that, and I told you what it is. And that is, you, and, and it sounds weird to time block your family. I know it yes. sounds weird. And I have, I, I, when I was doing that, when, when, um, with, when I had a young son, uh, people would actually come to me and say, you're, 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 too, um, you're too planned, you're too structured. Hmm. You need to be, you, you know, for you to block that time. And I went, well, I block it because I care. I block it because it's the most important thing to me. So I sit down every week and I ask the question, what does that time look like? And by the way, the, the way Jay and I talked about it, and that is, if I erase, I must replace. Hmm. So I used pencil. Because if something came up and I couldn't necessarily do that, then I had to, I had to move it. But I couldn't erase it and forget it. Great advice. Yeah. We're working on that. Yeah. Well, you know, the, 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 yeah, this is therapy in front of 10,000 people. I know, right? Oh, my gosh. I don't even know where my wife is right now. Yeah, she's smiling. Oh, she's right over there. She's smiling, <laughs> she's smiling and she's grinning and she's going, go, Gary, go. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, I was pretty famous for, and my, there's my son sitting right there. And, yeah. you know, when he, was, when he was a little guy, it was tough. So I would, I would block out that I was going to go to the, to the school and have lunch with him. Now, this was a time when it was okay to go. Later, he told me that I shouldn't come anymore. So, <laughs> as he got older. And you did say that, by the way. Uh, but, yeah, I would just make the appointment. And if... Uh, if and I ignored it. If, if someone was coming in or I had something to do, I made them go with me. And then we would sit there like this with these stools, like this with these little things of milk or whatever. And that's what we did. People say, where are we going out to eat? I say, we're going right over there. If you're not listening to Think Like a CEO, you should probably go download it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's in that, that podcast and it's been instrumental since you guys released it. Yeah, um, yeah that's right. It has been a brutal year. Yeah, I don't want you to sacrifice the goals right now, but I don't want you to lose your relationship in any way, shape, or form. Definitely and so, not. So, so we have to bring our, and in, in, during this period of building a business, we have to bring our family with us. Later, our family will take us with them. But right now, we're going to take them with us. I would bet there's a lot of people in the audience that, that needed to hear that. Yeah, right? that's, yeah that's right. You know? That's right. 
What I wanted people to see this morning is that you could, you could absolutely be having a great career and you can show up one morning and the stuff hits the fan yeah. and, and all your plans get turned upside down. Definitely. And then you go through this moment of what am I going to do? I will add a note to that and it's to profitability. The only way you can do that is with proper planning financially. Like in that moment, I was not worried about my finances whatsoever because I made the right decisions. I was running a business in a business, leading with profit, right? So right, right. When, when I sat down to plan out this last year, I wrote a budget based on where you thought the future of real estate would be, which is lower commission rates, you know, Could getting be. squeezed possibly, yeah. right? Or yeah. more competition, right? Yeah. And started out with the plan, one, three, five, budget, lead generation model, and built it all out. We've continued to change that and, and change the targets based on what our lead generation models are now, because I didn't know, right? I didn't know what was gonna happen over the, over the last year. But the key is make wise financial decisions, and then when that day comes, because it will come, it doesn't matter you know, it if it's business or personal. It does to all of us. The day's coming, and if you're, if you're ready for it, it, it gives you options. We're all in this business because we want options. That's right. right. That's right. That's exactly right. Well, you know, the, the hiring journey that you've gone through, I don't know that that was necessarily 100% your fault. I mean, you, you've had some weird circumstances that they happen, but they don't all happen in a year. No. You know what I'm saying? Not usually. Yeah, I don't think it, uh, when you and I talked about it, I don't think you made, I don't think you made poor hiring decisions. I think you got hit with, with some pretty bad luck. I did. Is yeah. that, that's the what first, it feels like The first me. one, uh, yeah, that was just bad luck. Second one, there was an opportunity for him, and it was probably, I didn't see it up front, so I probably could have, saw, uh, could have seen that, but there was a lot of pain at that time, mm. transaction-wise. Yeah. Um, the third one left for medical reasons, um, you know, and I had 25 transactions at that time. For me, that's a lot with one person. Um, so yes, there's been some bad, uh, some bad circumstances, but I learned from every single one of them. Um, and I'm still on that journey, right? So what'd you learn? So what would be the one thing that you would, you would share with us that, that you learned? Don't follow your heart when you're, uh, it's gonna be half don't follow your heart because you, you get to like someone and yeah. then you, you want that person to win. Uh, and then half hire to a very clear job description mm. and that changed every time, right? So I was asking the person to do way too much because we have a lot of transactions. Uh, it, it, they're, they're between roles right now. So I clearly separated the roles and we'll just deal with the transaction side later. Um, so you have to give very clear instruction on what you're looking for to find the right person. And time will tell if that person is right. Yeah, you know, the, the first thing you said about falling in love with a candidate, the, the way we think about it is business friendship is a really cool thing, but you got to get the business right and then the friendship comes. Right. It's not friend business, it's business <laughs> friend. Right. Yeah, and, and that's the way you do it. If you do it any other way, it's a problem. Don't fall in love with candidates, right? right? What a lot of people think is that the honeymoon starts when you, when you hire someone. The honeymoon starts 90 days after you hire them. Right. The 90 days of hiring that someone first starts to work with you, that's actually dating. You're still dating. And a lot of people don't think of it that way. They, they mistakenly think that, that in the interview and in all of that stage, that that's actually the hiring stage. But it's not. That, they think that's getting married when you hire them. But that's not true in the hiring world. In the hiring world, you're dating up until the 90 days. And then you decide and then if you, you want to get married. And then you decide if you want to get married. Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. And the reason is because um, if we had big businesses, we would hire from within as often as we could. Right. So we would have already known them and, and seen and have a better understanding of what we're going to get from it. But if we never met them before, how do we know? You don't. You don't know. You really don't. And if you, even if the people that you think you know, when you change the dynamic of now you're their employer, it, it's, I honestly think now it's better just to go, for me anyways, from outside at this point and bring them in and then mold them to what I want them to be. 
And then when our organization gets big enough, like the opportunity that was given to me, oops, um, like the opportunity that was given to me, we can yep. then lead them up the organization and provide opportunity. Right. I would have never stayed in my role if there wasn't more income potential, more growth potential. And so when you talk about building a big business is just the natural evolution of business itself, um, someone once said, it would be unfair, I think it was you, it would be unfair to hire someone and say, hey, you know, we're gonna stay exactly as we are forever, right? right? right. At, at that income level. That's right. So I'm trying to pitch, and I'm getting better at pitching a vision of where we wanna go. It's not because I want to be on stage, it's because I know to get the best people, we need to go here, right? You know, the one piece of advice I would give all of us, particularly if we're making that first hire, is hire your boss. Hmm. Hire your boss. In other words, don't hire them as someone who would report to you. Hire them as if you're going to report to them. Because I'll assure you, when you have an administrative, um, really strong administrative person in your life, they will manage you. Sure. Yeah, they will manage all the chaos. They will manage all of the, the moving parts. And if you think of it as you hiring your boss and you're applying for a job with them, you, you actually have it right. I would think you would look at different candidates too. I mm -hmm. would think that the bar would be set much higher than you know, just someone to fill the role to get rid of the pain today. Well, I will assure you that if we, if we held uh, um, agents to the standard of hire your boss instead of hire someone who reports to you, they'd hire a different person. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. They would hire a completely different person. And pay more too. Uh, they, they would be willing to pay more. That's yeah. exactly right. Um, Matt, and I go back to the mastermind from yesterday. They spoke of that, um, you know, setting a lot of hiring challenges can be traced right back to what they're offering for pay. So I've had to think about that myself and be okay with, and that all goes back to profitability. You can only do that if you're running within a profitable model, right? Yes, absolutely right. So um, word of advice, if, if um, someone out there called you up and said, man, I just had happened to me the same thing that happened to you what did you do? What would you tell them? Number what one, believe in yourself, right? Because you, you are a profitable uh, component of that business. It's not the business that's helping you succeed. I mean, we're doing it together, right? That's the purpose of a team. Um, and then put your head down and work, right? You, it, it takes work, it's and, not- And what do you mean by work? Do the right things, and what right? Are, what are those? Degenerate. Things? Okay. Set appointments. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else can follow. Yes. Right. I mean, if you if you see me, you know, Thursday morning or Friday morning when I get back to my office, I will be there at 7 a.m. making my calls yeah. until 12 o'clock. Yep. There you go. That's it. Yep. That's awesome. Thank you for the Thank opportunity. Thank you for sharing. Yep. We're proud of you. Cool.